It's always uh, good to be back here. Uh, you know, I was thinking about you all uh, the last couple of weeks, really, and I, I was thinking, you know, you, you come to a group and sometimes you need to say, Sorry go ahead. Interruption. No, no, no. Hey, guys, for those of you who don't know me, Noelle Adams. So I help with the meals for first kids on Wednesday nights at 530. So what we're looking for is for some of our Sunday school classes to kind of step up and take some of those meals. So we ask for home cooked meals, so we don't want any store bought foods. But um, pretty much, if you all are willing to do one of the weeks, I know you all got them last week. But if you all are willing to do one of the weeks, I will send out a sign up genius to the group. And what it'll be is, it'll, like, if you pick a pancake night, it'll be you know one slot for twenty five pancakes, another slot for twenty five pancakes, a slot for two packs of sausage links. So it's really it's broken down to where not one person has all the responsibility, but it would go to a bunch of people and then we just ask that you drop the food off by 5 15 to be served uh you don't have to serve but we would love if you would the kids love to uh see new faces and meet you know who's a part of our congregation and for you to meet them as well so i will leave you all with that you should have this sheet that was given last week in your yes, folder we have it and if you would just take a look at that and there's a date that works for you that would be great if right. not Thank you for your time. I, I didn't get that sheet. I was absent. But um, are there pre-planned menus that you want us to cook? There is a pre-planned menu, but if, and it really it's just the things the kids like. If you don't like what's on the pre-planned right. menu you want to take, you can pick something different and just say, well, we're going to do this. And we will say thank you very much. <laughs> it's interesting. Some of the kids, you know, not all get a good home-cooked meal. Last year we did. Chicken with a bone, and that was a new concept for some of us. We have a waffle tea that did it last year. Okay. How about that? It's amazing. Okay. So we do have a national pancake day, a national French toast day, and we can substitute one of those in for our national waffle day. Okay. But let us know which one you'd like to do, and we'll put the group there. Okay. Waffle king over there. <laughs> but it's pretty easy just you know put stuff together we can keep it warmer however and get it started okay right thank you and right. guys i'll reach back out um uh, i'll hear from you next week to see what which date you picked thank you thanks <laughs> well that's great you all are always involved in <clears throat> something good and uh Again, I, I certainly appreciated reading the Salisbury Magazine article on you all and uh, great pictures of you. Uh, you know, I, I remember my first time coming here and, and you know, you never know what to expect. And then the second and third time, you, you kind of got to know you guys a little bit. And it gets a little more intimidating, you know, as you go. But I, I really feel pretty laid back today. So uh, I'm grateful <laughs> for that. And, uh, uh, I, I would like to say I call you friends. I wish I could say the same for my folks at my church uh, that I serve. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, when you're a pastor, you, you do have friends there, but certainly our flock, so to speak. And then uh, when we leave, uh, that's when people uh, migrate into friendship, really. Uh, so it, it's really great being here with you. Happy birthday, Doug. And uh, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, another birthday. Real hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, Lord. He did 77. <laughs> A mere child. Yeah. 77. You know, it's good to see uh, Bill Wagner on the screen there. Uh, I remember the first time I saw Bill, which was at our church at the time, Milford Hills, and we had this citywide meeting on changing the lanes on the uh, uh, Statesville Boulevard to what three so we could have bicycle lane and that did not go over uh, <laughs> but Bill was wearing this great uh, blue jean shirt long sleeve and I thought to myself I wish I had a shirt like that and, uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you still have that blue jean shirt Bill always good to see Bob Lewis I'm sorry oh no <laughs> Bob Lewis uh, was here last time when Bob was here in the uh, Again, uh, Trevi, Trevor Epihammer, uh, and a great tribute to Bob. So thank you. I want to start off with uh, 
our, our focus today is on forgiveness. And again, you know, we have all these preacher stories and that's why I asked Dottie if you wanted to stay for the preacher story, uh, certainly to stay throughout, but uh, I, I wanted you to hear this just to see what you thought. But, you know, when you're preaching, it's, it's, it's scary every time. It, you just don't know how it's going to come out. And, you know, of course, you're up there. And uh, here's this story about this preacher preaching about forgiveness. He said, you know, forgiveness is necessary. It's hard. And maybe you can take it in steps. So the first time you uh, you don't like somebody because something's happened. And, and you just nod your head. So the next Sunday you see him again and, and you say hi. And again, you're asking the Holy Spirit to help you with this. The third time you see them, you actually go up and shake their hand. So you're, you're getting there. And sometimes forgiveness takes a while. And so this is the sermon this preacher's preaching. And he gets home. And, you know, for me, Sunday afternoon is tough because that's when my wife, Sandy, tells me, you know, how it went. <laughs> oh, and, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> Sometimes it is, but anyhow, here's this preacher that had Sunday dinner, uh, in this case, uh, the man, and his wife says, honey, you know, your sermon just, it just didn't hit it. And again, you, you preach on forgiveness. I know you've got to do that. And, and, and the, the pastor says, I know it wasn't good, but you know, the weirdest thing happened after the sermon, people going out. I have never had that many people shake my hand. You get it? If you don't like somebody, you <laughs> shake their hand. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're helping each other out here. And uh, again, uh, so if you're shaking my hand at the end of this uh, uh, time together, I'll, I'll, uh, I guess I'll say we're on our way <laughs> to forgiveness. Uh, well, um, I've asked uh, Tony Almeida to read our scripture today. Again, uh, Jesus meets an adulteress, and this is what happens. Tony, if you would share with us. Sure. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against Jesus. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Thank you. So the woman is forgiven. She's set free, and then the commandment, Do not sin again. Let's pray. Dear God, Jesus, uh, dear God, Holy Spirit, dear God, creator of us all, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. There's been a lot of rain uh, here in our area, especially on the coast. And, and we wake up to the beauty of the sun, the beauty of what might happen next, the beauty of being together here in this room. Lord Jesus, we thank you for forgiveness, which sets us free. So that once again, we can hear your commandments anew. Amen. Uh, Jesus, you know, he's, he's in this confrontation. Uh, he's uh, being perhaps uh, tricked uh, by the Pharisees. And, 
And I want to give a plug for the Pharisees. The Pharisees are, are folks who are leaders of the Jewish community. They're trying to keep it together. And, and they're trying to keep uh, the Jewish flock together. Because if you can imagine, I was trying to think about what if we were occupied? Uh, 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 I really can't come up with a good one, but uh, what if we were occupied, say, by Russia? And uh, basically, we're paying taxes to Russia. Uh, we were having to watch it because we didn't know who was Russian or who might be listening to us. Maybe that's not the best metaphor. But uh, again, this was Roman occupation, folks. This was not a, an easy time. And, and you had to watch your P's and Q's. And the Pharisees were trying to hold it together. You know, let's not get too out of line here. or We're going to pay the price. So, so uh, a, a gift for the Pharisees seeking to keep uh, folk together in line so that their worship could continue. Well, they, they come with this woman and she is an adulteress. And in Jesus' time and, and way back before, you, you could be uh, stoned to death for adultery. And not only the woman, but the man. And the interesting thing is that Jesus says he's asked about, shall this woman be uh, stoned and, and pay for her sin as an adulteress? Jesus bends down and, and nobody knows what he's writing on the ground. He's, he's taking his finger and, and, and we don't know. And there's been all kinds of conjecture. But when I was reading your lesson, this really hit me. Uh, we don't know what Jesus wrote on the ground or in the sand. But one question was this. He might have written, where is the man? Where is the man? I mean, it takes two to commit adultery. Where is the man? And maybe, again, we don't know conjecture on our part. Maybe the Pharisees were just trying to trick Jesus to see what he would do, because even in Roman law now, uh, they could not put uh, this woman to death. Because, again, on their own, yes, they could. But, again, Roman law did not allow others to put other people to death. So uh, Jesus is put on the spot. And of course, uh, as he usually does, he says, whoever is without sin can cast the first stone. Uh, Pharisees in, in Jesus' day and way back when, the Apostle Paul who wrote the letters, this is what a Pharisee would pray on a regular basis. It's a threefold thank you. And again, this is in regard to this woman who was brought to be uh, basically tried. Uh, the threefold prayer that a Pharisee prayed. Thank you, God, that I am a Jew and not a Gentile. The second is, thank you, God, that I am free and not a slave. And thank you, God, that I am a man and not a woman. That's why I wanted Dot here to, to give a rebuttal to that. Uh, thank you, God, that I am a woman and and not a man, yeah, so, uh, but, but that's the stakes here, uh, and, you know, uh, Pharisees, have you ever called them, heard them called bleeding Pharisees, uh, some of them were so strict, if they saw a woman, they would close their eyes, and sometimes by doing that, they would walk into a tree, and, and they'd have, you know, blood on their faces, so, uh, thank God that I am not a woman, so this is really a stack against her, situation. And of course, Jesus realized, <clears throat> where is the man? Uh, what, what a sentence. So, I'm sorry? It could have been. Could have been. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Good point. Could have been one of the Pharisees. Yeah. Well, here is the point of this whole thing. Jesus offers this gift of forgiveness, Jesus sets this woman free, and then he gives her a commandment to sin no more. Do not do this anymore. And, and I wonder how, how often does that happen in our lives? And today I'm really coming here to say, uh, uh, do you and do I need to be forgiven for something? so that we can be set free. 
so that we can hear uh, the voice of Jesus saying, this is your life now going forward. You know, sometimes I'll talk to my wife, Sandy. Uh, she is such a good soul. Uh, some of you may know her through Meals on Wheels. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about this. I'll say, Sandy, I really hope I go first. And uh, I said, I just don't think I could do it without you. And, 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 uh, and then I'll say this. I just want you to know it's okay if you remarry. <laughs> and then she says, I'm never getting married again. <laughs> No way. I said, well, what about, you know, and I'll tease her about some guy that, you know, and, and she says, stop it. I am never getting married again. But uh, again, there are things that, you know, out of this lesson, I'm being pretty honest with you here. I hope that um, I would maybe have a session with Sandy. I'm telling you this ahead of the fact. So feel free to ask me if we run into each other. Do I? Do I need to ask Sandy, you know, for forgiveness? Uh, you know, the old adage about the couple who's uh, in the car and uh, they used to sit like this, but now they sit like this. And, and sometimes we, we live these parallel lives with those <coughs> with whom we know the best. And uh, maybe these actions of life have, have pushed us apart. Uh, so I'm, I'm saying to you today that this, this forgiveness thing has been coming up in my sermons lately because, again, I follow the lectionary, this prescribed uh, set of lessons throughout. It's keeping on hammering, and I'm just wondering, you know, what is this lesson saying to me? Part of the uh, urgency of sharing this with you today is that, yes, we've heard this story before, but maybe the urgency is that there's somebody here or maybe all of us here that really need to hear this story today for where we are in our current situations. The power of being forgiven and then being able to listen and to begin again. Uh, we do this with our children. Um, okay, I'm gonna forgive you, but I really want this to turn around. And uh, sometimes, you know, as parents, we wonder, don't we, how many times do I do that <clears throat> for my child? Um, but again, the power of forgiveness. I looked up this week, uh, how many years do you think it's been since the Amish shooting where, you know, they're in the schoolhouse? And I think I'm right about this. The man who walked in tied up <clears throat> 10 young women. 10 female students. I think he shot all of them. Five were killed and five were injured. How long do you think that's been? I always look back on Google and see. Just take a wild guess. 30, 20. It's actually been 16. And it'll be 16 as of this next Monday, a week, October the 2nd. It's been 16 years. And, and the power of that, uh, they made a movie of that, Amish Grace came out in the movie, and, and the power of that. Uh, Vic and I were talking before the class. One, one Sunday I was in here, and Vic was the teacher. And, and again, we both may need help here, but there was a lady, I think Vic was telling the story about this lady who was a uh, employee at Catawba College. And there's, I think, a street now, named after her. Maybe she was like a... Um, you know, uh, dorm mother kind of type. But I think there's a street named after her, and her son was maybe special needs, and he was horrifically killed by some fellow students. Does that ring a bell? And Tom Overcash was in here, and then he rejected how, what they did to this kid, what the boys did to her son, and it was brutal. And I, and I don't know if you remember her name. Cheney. 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 Helen Cheney and her Flash son. Or something like Cheney. That. But anyhow, uh, what Vic shared, and, and again, I just think about this, what Vic shared, and we hear so many things in worship and wherever, but what Vic shared was that she 
publicly forgave these boys for this really awful, and then just kill them. They, uh. So again, the power of the Amish, the power of uh, this mother, and the power of Jesus saying, you're forgiven, go sin no more. I wonder sometimes how much we are just weighed down by uh, by life and uh, what has been maybe done to us, but what we have maybe done to others. See, this this is what I thought Gary was believing this. Yes, the adulteress was forgiven. And the adulteress can be anybody and everybody. Who does the adulteress turn around and forgive? Yeah. Who do we forgive? Yeah. We're all so happy to accept forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. It's like a young rich prince or something. Yes. Who do we forgive? Yes. So again, Randy, your point, when this woman and when we are forgiven, who do we realize that we can also go out and forgive? And again, the great, uh, the, 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 the steward, the king uh, who forgives his, his uh, servant, you know, this outlandish amount, and then the servant goes out and takes somebody by the collar who owes him just a penance compared to what he owed. And, and then the king finds out, and, of course. So again, who are we now free to forgive? Uh, that's huge. Uh, you know what I'm just so tired of as a pastor in the church? I'm just so sick of this. And again, I think I'm so sick of it because I've probably done it too. When something happens in the church and we get mad at somebody, what do we do? We toss that person aside or we quit going to that church and we go to another church or, or we just quit altogether. And it's almost like I am the, I am the God of my life uh, and I can determine what I'm going to do. And I, I'm just really tired of that. <laughs> you know, there are about three couples uh, at Central Church and I can say Central because it's every church. <clears throat> But, but they basically said, I, I got mad about this. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I wonder if I've done that. And uh, we sure do cut ourselves off, don't we? And one of the stories about if I'm the one who's hurt, I'm the one to go and seek that person out. I've never heard of that happening. I, I've tried to do it maybe a couple of times in a feeble kind of way. Uh, but again, we're justified, aren't we? I'm right. I don't have to seek you out and, and try to make amends. You're the one who hurt me. I mean, after all. Uh, but again, this power, folks, is what I'm trying to lift up today. Steve? Yes. Uh, Bill Wagner texted in and said uh, it was Helen Cheney and her son Clint. Okay. Is I just one? remembered. I just okay. remembered. Okay. Remember. Yeah. So, so, uh, so uh, Helen Cheney and her son Clint. And how long ago do you think that was? Yeah, fifty. Yeah. All right, and and thank you, Bill. Um, so that that story still stays with us, and the power of that. And if she can do that, maybe there's hope for me too. That child was the only thing she had. Yeah, yeah. Helen Cheney. Helen Cheney. She wrote the post. Okay, so it wasn't an she wasn't an employee at the time. Ah, no. Okay. So she was a writer for the post. Intellectual challenge. And yes. The boys enticed him to get that car and shot him in the back of the head. Yeah. Took it to a graveyard out in the county. Yes. One of the churches in Maryville. So Helen. She, she went to see him. She went to see him in prison mm -hmm. and prayed with him. And gave him. Unreal. Yes. And again, you know, we've heard these stories, but I, I'm saying to you today, maybe there's somebody me. You, that the timing of this story is, is very, very critical. I, I'm going to close by just sharing this. Um, uh, at one of my churches, I, I have had, and there are about three people. Uh, you know, we all need to take care of ourselves. And, and uh, there are about three people that were on my case. And, and part of it was because of my doing. Um, but, you know, I decided if you can give it to me, I'm going to give it to you. 
And uh, one time this guy comes in, he was just going to walk by me. And I took his hand. I said, hey, how are you doing? And I did not let go of his hand. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he complained to the personnel committee about it. And uh, so anyhow, um, finally I was, quote, voted out. Uh, you know, I tease and say in the Methodist Church, unlike the Baptist, uh, we don't get fired in the Methodist Church. We get moved. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's why we only stay four years in the church kind of thing. And, and that's no longer the case at all. But, but do you realize I'm self-employed as a Methodist minister because no local church can hire or fire a, a pastor in the Methodist Church. We're, we're sent there. So I have to, uh, you know, do my taxes as self-employed, by the way. But anyhow, we have this personnel committee that's pretty strong, and, and they can vote us out. And the bishop has final say, but they're strong. And so I, I, I was kicked out. And uh, I went, though, to another church. And in that, I, I felt like I'd been forgiven. Couldn't work it out with the folk in that church, but I really did feel like I'd been forgiven. And, and going to that next church, you know, folks, I, it was like I was set free. I said, I'm not going to get upset with people. I'm not going to worry about outcomes. Uh, I am a, I'm just going to hang out. And, and I'm going to get to know people. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> do the pastoral nod. You know what the pastoral nod is? I don't agree with you, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it turned out to be one of the best churches ever uh, in my pastor. So uh, the power of this God, Jesus, coming to forgive, to set her free so that she could hear the new commandment. Go out and live on abundant life. Thanks so much to the Every Man's Bible class. You guys are awesome. Whenever I see you out in the... Uh, streets and byways of Salisbury. It's amazing. Y'all say hi to me in public. I, 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 that means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And wherever you might be, uh, Will Paul, you're way down in Oklahoma, but I'll go on. I'm, I'm going to go on to uh, Central Church of Spencer, but thank you so much again, all of you, for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.